Today I'm sharing my November reading wrap up and a few of my favorite things. Hey there, it's Mitzi. Welcome to my channel. So today I just wanted to talk to you about what I've been reading in November. I wanted to do an update last week, but I was in between books and things and wrapping things up, so I thought I'll just wait till after November is over and immediately I will share my wrap up because I had some favorite things I wanted to share too. So I have read a lot of books since the last time we have a bit talked, since the last thing I posted and a reading update. It's been several weeks now, I think. So I do have a a good bit here so bear with me. So one of the things that I participated in in November was the Historathon and I will leave um, all that information below if you're interested in seeing that. But one of the books on my historical fiction reading for the Historathon was The Nature of Fragile Things by Susan Meisner and I loved this book. It was so good. This is the second uh, Susan Meissner I've read and it will not be my last. I really enjoyed this one. I'm trying to remember what the other one was uh, that I read. I'll, I'll try to remember. Maybe I can put it up here or something. So anyway, The Nature of Fragile Things is about a girl who is a mail order bride. <clears throat> and it takes place in uh, 1906. There's a massive earthquake in San Francisco and that's when it takes place so it's in the early 1900s which I love that time period so this was really good for me. Susan Meissner really is a great storyteller she really I mean immediately as soon as you start on the first page the way she describes the the setting how she just immerses you in the story immediately I just really like the way that she tells a story so I was excited uh, to read this one but anyway she's a mail order bride and it goes back and forth. Another thing that I liked about this one, I'm saying too much at one time, sorry. Uh, another thing I liked about this one was it is a trend now in historical fiction to have dual timelines. And this one does, sort of, but it's not really <clears throat> a dual timeline. I mean, it, it is. It goes back and forth because when you start, you are in um, a police station and there's an investigator and uh, she's being questioned, the, the main character. So it, it's a few years ahead, but not that far ahead. And then it goes back and she is telling the story to him. So you go back to hear the story. So that's how this one's told. And I loved that because a lot of times I'm not interested in both the, oh, I know what it was, the last year of the war. That was the other one I read. I'm not usually interested in the modern day timeline as I am the uh, back in history timeline because I read for historical fiction. Well, this one was still set in the early 1900s because it was still the main character and she was telling this uh, investigator her story. I, I guess I'm making sense on that. So it really was still historical fiction and I loved it. I was so, of course, as she was telling him her story as well as when you went back and read the story, it was great and interesting all the way through. And on the uh, the last year of the war, it's a dual timeline, and it is modern day and historical fiction. But I must say that in that one, Susan Meisner did a great job because I was interested in the modern day story just as much as the historical fiction part. So she does a great job, and I really like the way that she handles those things. Anyway, this story when it started, I was like, okay, I understand. It's going to be about this woman who marries this man that she really doesn't know. He has a young daughter. His wife has died. And so she's, there's an understanding between them that this is more of a business arrangement than anything else. So I was on board for it, but wow, it changes. <laughs> it changed into a totally different story and it blew me away. There is definitely a, a shock, a, a definitely a shock in the in the middle of this story, and it just took a turn in a completely different direction. So I love this one, and if you have not read a Susan Meisner, I recommend The Last Year of the War, but I highly recommend, I love this one even more, The Nature of Fragile Things, because it was fantastic. 
And then I also picked up another series of unfortunate events. This is the All Steer Academy, and it is number five. I'm not going to say too much about it because it is the fifth in a series, but I'm trying to make my way through this whole series because I've wanted to read it for years. So I really enjoyed that as well. And then I read for Nonfiction November, I was trying to read for all of the prompts on the Nonfiction November read-a-thon prompts and this one actually fulfilled all of the prompts although I did read others but Mayflower by Nathaniel Philbrick this was an interesting read but it took me a lot longer to read than I thought it would nonfiction does take me longer because it's so detailed and there's so much to learn and in the beginning there were so many names I was totally confused to begin with trying to keep up with who was who and all of that at the beginning as they set out on the uh, journey to America. And I thought that this story, so I did have to reread some parts and slow down tremendously in order to understand some things uh, going on because it was super detailed. This Nathaniel Philbrick, it feels like he really did his homework on this one. <clears throat> but I thought because it was called Mayflower, it was going to be about the journey over to America. But that was only the very beginning. The rest of it is after they have settled. And about half of it is about the generation after the Mayflower. So at the, gen the next generation after the Pilgrims had landed and the war, uh, the Phillips War, King Phillips War, after the um, pilgrims had landed which i didn't know anything about that time period and wow i was blown away by what happened it was really sad it was tragic it was super violent there was a lot of violent details in here that i really didn't want, <laughs> want to read but you know it was something I, I needed to know about history so i did read the whole thing but it, some parts were really hard to read about some of the uh, children, some things that happened to the children was just horrible. And other people too, not just the children. There was a lot of, you know, scalping and torture and burning people in their wigwams. It was really some graphic violent things but it is historical so <clears throat> he certainly doesn't sugarcoat anything so if you are if you really want to know some of the details about the pilgrims not so much the voyage itself but after they settled that area i highly recommend mayflower and i am glad that i read that for nonfiction november and again, it did help me with my prompts on the Nonfiction November readathon. One of the other books that I had planned on reading for Nonfiction November was Classic Penguin Cover to Cover. I loved this. This was given to me for my birthday. My family gave it to me for my birthday this past year. And this was so great. But there is a warning. If you are a, a person that loves book covers and you can't resist buying them, then you might not want this because I now want every penguin there is. Because what this is, is a uh, history of the um, penguin covers and their editions and the different series. And it goes through and tells about the artist. And the artist kind of give you um, a little bit about how they were inspired to create that particular cover art for that book after reading it. So it's super interesting. If you love book covers and especially all those uh, penguin classics and all the beautiful covers that the penguin books have, you probably would enjoy this too. It's filled with all kinds of details about different um, series that I didn't even know existed. So now, like I said, um, I'm going to have to put some of these on my birthday and Christmas wish list because now I want several of these books too. But I enjoyed this one. And again, I read this for Nonfiction November. And that was a great way. Nonfiction November was a great way to get some of these read because, you know, I, I received this for my birthday. And then the other one, the Mayflower, I'd had for a little while too. And then another one that I wanted to read because I am participating or I was participating in the Moore Montgomery Challenge, which by the way, if you um, are participating in the Moore Montgomery Challenge and you completed the um, 
whole board, you blacked out the board, <clears throat> let me know in the comments because we're going to have a live drawing on Sunday, this coming Sunday at 4 p.m. And during that time, we're going to talk about what all we read, but we're going to have a live drawing for the biggest prize is for the ones that blacked out their whole board. Now, if you participate and just read something, you will be in a drawing because we're gonna have several drawings. But if you've blacked it out, let me know. So let me know in the comments if you blacked out your Moore Montgomery Challenge bingo board and let me know if maybe you read one or if you, uh, you know, read across to get bingo or whatever. Let me know those those things in the comments so that I can go ahead and get uh, some of those names in for the drawing on Sunday. And then join us live on Sunday and we'll be drawing for that. But anyway, I read The Anne of Green Gables Treasury. Elizabeth was kind enough to send me this copy. And this is wonderful. If you're an Anne of Green Gables fan, I highly recommend this. So um, again, Elizabeth gave it to me. If you haven't followed Elizabeth. I will put her link in the description box. Lizzie Faye loves books. She is hosting with me the More Montgomery Challenge, but she sent me this as a thank you for co-hosting with her, and it is fantastic. It is full of all kinds of tidbits about Green Gables and Prince Edward Island, and there's crafts, and there's um, a few uh, recipes, just all kinds of things. There's also some things about Anne. There's a timeline of Anne in here. And so it's just for any Anne of Green Gables fan, I highly recommend this. This would be a, if you're looking for a gift for someone, this would be a wonderful one for someone who loves Anne of Green Gables like I do. So this was a fantastic read and I really enjoyed that. Another nonfiction. I don't read a lot of nonfiction, but during nonfiction November, I try to up, you know, my game on my nonfiction reading, and I did great this year, so I was really excited about that. Then to take a little break from all the nonfiction, I read another Agatha Christie, and this was another Tommy and Tuppence, and it's Partners in Crime. This one was different because it's short stories, and I do love short stories, but I must say, this was my least favorite of the Tommy and Tuppence series because it was short stories. Some of the stories just kind of ended and they were a little too quick for me, but I will say it's Tommy and Tuppence and I love them. I love their dynamic and their relationship and I love how they play off each other. So that is in here. So if you enjoy Tommy and Tuppence and you like short stories, you may want to try Partners in Crime, but I will say for me personally, it was my least favorite of the Tommy and Tuppence series. But I was glad to get that read because I want to read all of the Agatha Christie's. And then I read, hold on a minute, let me grab some more books. And then I read another nonfiction uh, book for Nonfiction November, and this was a um, Christian nonfiction, and it's called Knowing God by J.I. Packer. Now, this is an old book. It came out, I think, in the 70s, and it's been around. Millions of copies have been sold, and it's still in print because it's such a good one. I thought, okay, this will be basic Christianity, kind of like the John, I think John Stott wrote basic Christianity. Um, but it's, it was much more in depth than that. It is still basic Christianity, but it was a little more in depth than, than that little book. Uh, if you've read that one, if you know anything about it, I highly recommend that one too. But this was really a great read. If you look, I have tapped a lot because I want to go back and study some of the, um, different sections. Some of the things were, I mean, everything in it, I already knew, but some of the things, the way he talked about them, um, you know, made me think about what I thought and what I believed and how I read scripture. So it is thought provoking and I enjoyed that about it. It is all based on scripture and how, you know, he has studied scripture to come up with um, all the things about how to know God. He starts out with that, you know, a lot of people don't think you can know God, <clears throat> but it, through this, he says through scripture, yes, you can, that in fact, God does want you to know him and know him personally. And so it, that's what this is about. And it talks about all the different attributes of God and how um, through scripture, we learn 
all of those things. Also, the, the hard things like God's wrath and things like that. So I enjoyed this. I do need to go back through because it was full of a lot of um, scripture and every chapter you could take a month and just study that chapter. So I do recommend Knowing God by J.I. Packer. I enjoyed that one. Again, it was from the 70s, but it it's so popular it's still in print. And then I mentioned earlier in a video where I was given away the memoir by Karen Grossel. If you haven't seen that, I'll try to remember to link it in the cards. But I had gone over to the the uh, book tavern which is a local bookstore in my area in augusta georgia and picked up the nutcracker by eta hoffman now i picked this up because i was actually going to the ballet and so i picked this one up and then i checked out a copy because my son and i were both going to, to the ballet so we we thought we'd buddy read it and then talk about it this is super interesting i thought i knew the nutcracker story because i've read picture books I've seen the Nutcracker on TV, you know, I'd never attended before, but I'd, I'd seen it on TV. But it's a lot different than what I thought it was. It's not very long. It's very, it's dreamlike, of course. Um, and I did enjoy it. I love the premise of the Nutcracker and how she falls in love with the Nutcracker and tries to help the Nutcracker through the story. But there are parts where he kind of went off on a tangent on some other things like at the end there's a victory and then there's a whole nother um, chapter that is just this, okay, we're going to go off in this boat and <laughs> we're going to sail to another land. To me, some of that just wasn't necessary to the story. But overall, I did enjoy it. I'm glad I read it and I especially loved reading it with my son so that we could talk about it. So that was a lot of fun. And then, of course, we went to the Nutcracker um, this past week, this past Monday night. And so it was fun to read the book, discuss it all last week, and then go to the Nutcracker and then discuss that as well. So that was a lot of fun. I also want to mention that uh, because we were buddy reading, I checked out a picture book version of the Nutcracker, and it's uh, the pictures are are illustrated by Maury Sendak of Where the Wild Things Are, and I love his pictures. And so this is the book, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And my son allowed me to read from that one because he knows how much I love illustrations. He read this copy, and then I read from this one, and it is just gorgeous. I loved the pictures in this one. I love the end, that picture. And even on pages where it's a lot of words, you'll have little, uh, you'll have pictures, you know, all throughout it. It's a beautiful copy of the Nutcracker. And I, now I, I want my own copy of this because it was gorgeous and it made the reading that much more fun. So I highly recommend the Maury Sendak version of the Nutcracker if you can get your hands on it. Check your library and see because it would be great to read during Christmas time. And then for Nonfiction November, I had another book that I read and that was Invincible Louisa by Cornelia Meggs. This is um, about Louisa May Alcott. I read this because it had the Newberry medal on the front. I used it for Element. That was a stretch, I know, but I'm trying to read all the Newberries. This was a great read, and I highly recommend it if you want to know more about Louisa May Alcott. However, I had already read several years ago Eden's Outcast, which is a super detailed adult nonfiction about Louisa May Alcott and her father Bronson and that book blew me away. It's probably the best nonfiction biography I have ever read and it's so detailed. This is a middle grade version of and it does talk about her father and her family and everything in this but because it's a middle grade version it's you know more condensed for a middle grade reader. But again, it does have a lot of the details. Still, because I had read Eden's Outcast, I didn't really learn anything from this one. However, I'm glad I read it because it refreshed my memory about some of the things from that biography, and it makes me <laughs> want to read that biography again. So I do recommend that one if you want to just have more of an introduction to Louisa May Alcott. But I tell you, Eden's Outcast is just a fantastic book. So I read that for Nonfiction November as well. And I can't remember, I'll have to look back and see, but I can't remember how many 
uh, I ended up reading. I'll try to remember and I'll put it down here because I may have talked about some already, but I did read several nonfiction in November and that never happens for me. So I was, I was super proud for that. And then I also read four um, historical fiction books for Historathon. Then I read just a couple of other things. Last weekend, I decided I'm going to go ahead and start during the Thanksgiving holiday, I had a little time to read, so I thought, I'm going to go ahead and start re reading some of my little short stories for Christmas. And so I picked up The Little Amish Matchmaker by Linda Byler. And apparently, Linda Byler is Amish. So this is truly an Amish book. And it was just a super fun way to kick off Christmas. It's a cute little story. It's not very long. And it's simple has a little romance in it, but if you want something that gives you all the cozy, heartwarming feels for Christmas, I highly recommend this because it was perfect for that. And I really did enjoy reading um, this one, The Little Amish Matchmaker. And then I picked up Christmas with Ann by Ellen Montgomery for the More Montgomery Challenge. This is a short story collection of, um, it doesn't just have Ann short stories in it and it's pretty much just excerpts at the beginning of some Anne of Green Gables books from her series. But there's also some other holiday stories written by Montgomery as well. And I enjoyed this one. Um, I, I read last month Among the Shadows and I like the last few short stories of that collection better than the beginning ones. In this one, I, I must say I really enjoyed most of these short stories. This because it has that Christmassy feel, the holiday feel. The problem I have though is Ellen Montgomery has certain plots that she uses. And so if you read this like I did all in one seating, I'm sitting here reading these little short stories, it got to be a little repetitive because a lot of the same things you know, in one, there was a person that didn't have anywhere to go for Christmas. Well, then two stories later, it was the same thing. Uh, in one, it was about not having enough money to afford Christmas for the kids. In a couple of stories later, it was the same plot. You see what I'm saying? So that was a problem. But if you pick this up and read a story, later on pick it up and read another story, I think it would work better that way. But I did enjoy the stories and it was a great one again for Christmas. And if you have an Anne of Green Gables person in your life, a, a fan, that would be a good one to pick up for Christmas time. And then finally, I read Richard Peck's A Season of Gifts. Now, I saw this and thought, okay, this will be Christmassy, but it's not <laughs> Christmassy. It's a short little book. It is um, supposed to be the third one in A Long Way From Chicago, A Year Down Yonder, that series. And it is, but it's not. It's not exactly like the other two books. I like the other two a whole lot more than I like this one. It was good. It had some quirky characters, which I enjoy. I love Richard Peck's writing, but the plot of this one just wasn't quite as interesting. And I was looking for something all Christmassy. Now, the last couple of chapters of this is Christmas time, but this goes, it's a season of gifts because it goes through every season. And for me, I was looking for more just Christmas. So I did enjoy it, but it wasn't as good as A Year Down Yonder and A Long Way From Chicago. So those are the books that I read during November. Um, I know I have put up a reading update. I'll try to remember to link to that too from the other books I read in November. It has been a great month of reading for me. I also had a couple of favorite things. I went to the book signing for Bright Lights Prairie Dust and met Karen Grossel, and that was definitely a treat for me in November. I also attended the Nutcracker, the ballet, and after reading, buddy reading with my son the Nutcracker book, it was really great to actually then go see the, the ballet uh, live. So that was a lot of fun too. So what have you been reading? Did you participate in any of these readathons during November? And are you reading something right now that is festive and filled with Christmas fun? Let me know that in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.